So hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to any new viewers that might be out there. If you're new and you haven't done so yet, please like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. It really does help me engage with you more and make videos that you want to see. So also by leaving comments is a really good way. Let me know what you want to see and the more engagement I can get with you, I think the better I can build this channel. It seems to be getting some momentum at the moment anyway. So anyway, enough waffling about that. Episode 3. In the last episode we looked at cutting the ISP and the great lengths of analness I went to to do that pretty well. And in the first episode, we looked at uh, the tolerances of the BV shell. Anyway, like I said, episode three, we're going to look at installing the new bottom bracket and doing some basic building like routing the cables, uh, routing the brake lines, and just we're going to take a little look at the parts that I used to build it up to get me going. A little bit of a teaser, I'm going to use an old bottom bracket that I already pushed out of a different frame in this one. So actually, yeah, you can reuse press fit bottom brackets if the uh, frame and bottom bracket tolerances allow you to basically install and remove it without too much force and damaging the bearings. But anyway, we'll get into that. Enough waffling from me. Let's have a look at the video. So the last thing you saw me doing probably was cutting the ISP. That's all done. That went smoothly. Thank God. After that, I started to build the bike. Now I started building it yesterday around lunchtime and it just took an absolute fucking age because actually i had to strip my super six disc to rob the uh, group set shifters brakes everything off it and then once i'd done that uh, well that took a, f a fair a fair time and then once you start kind of taking bits off that kind of cleaning them degreasing parts like the de derailers and stuff then i didn't really get very far with this i started to put the group set on do the internal cable routing and obviously to get that from the other bike to this one I had to split the the brake lines and one thing I completely forgot about when doing that was that I needed to have new uh, crush olives, the brass olives which attach basically the hoses to the shifters or a one piece item and uh, sorry a one use item. So I had to go and source some of those more locally from the bike shop, they sorted me out straight away that was really good so I could carry on with that. I've now got the brake lines installed and um, routed through the frame to to the shifters which is really good so i can carry on uh, and basically the only thing left to do now is put the cranks in put the bb in the derailleur cables go under the bb uh, that brake cable will actually go above the spindle when i pull it up through but the derailleur cables go under the bb and it's just you can do it with the bb in because of these plastic guides here which push up but it's much easier to do it once um when the bb is out basically so I've, put those in, got all the cables out as to the right length. And actually I said DI2 was a faff. I actually remember now that internal mechanical cabling is a faff as well. Because it, you've got to get those lengths of outers right. But that's all done. I will go to DI2 when the new 12-speed um, one comes out, but for now I'm just going to carry on using this. I don't want to buy it twice. Shock horror. And I've said this before. Shock horror. I'm going to be using a GXP BB in this frame. It's a push fit, uh, press fit BB, so it's not too bad. Um, and I've used this very BB in my other TCR uh, with a BB86 bottom bracket standard. I've used that with no problems before. I don't like GXP, but it, it's what my quark power meter is, and I need to use my quark power meter on this. I'm not buying a new power meter because power meters aren't really consistent across different brands. So. To use my quark in this, I've got to put GXP BB in. I don't expect it to be a problem. This will push in absolutely fine. Um, the OD toll of this is the same as the Shimano one, which is a good surprise. Um, so that should go in no problem. So the next thing you'll see me doing is putting in the BB. I'll put a light, light bit of grease in there to get that in. But yeah, apart from that, we're all good to go nearly. Frame's looking nice. The cut on the ISP was mega smooth. I'll drop in a picture of that if I can. See how sharp I got that cut. Uh, Mex wise, I'm using obviously Dura Ace front and rear. Now the front mech, I actually prefer the old style of front mech where you had like the long lever arm pull because I find routing the cables on these short ones uh, it's neater after you've got the cable through, but it's quite quite fiddly to get tension on the cable because you put the cable through such a tight bend when you're pulling it through. It's hard to get enough tension on it before you do the pinch bolt up and it's a lot easier with the old lever arm style but once you've got it done it's fine. This cable is actually um, a bit short because it's supposed to loop around and then hide out of the way. It's a bit short but I've, I've just reused that off the old bike. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, don't really care about that. I'll sort that out. 
And then, wheels wise, I'm using my uh, custom disc wheel set that I built for the Super 6. It's not the lightest. Um, this bike probably deserves lighter wheels. The front wheel is really light because it's the tune hub and the 24 holes, but on the rear I've got a 28 hole and a slightly deeper rim, which is a bit pointless because actually if you're going to have a deeper rim, you want your deeper rim on, on the front. And I know that goes against anything you've probably ever seen before, but the front wheel is the most important in aerodynamics. And actually if you have one rim that's deeper, you probably want to use that on the front. It'll look a bit silly because no one does it, but that's what I'm going to do next time. Um, Steerer tube, haven't cut that yet. I'm leaving loads of spaces. I'm not going to cut it until um, I'm really happy with my position. From my old TCR to this one, I actually want to be a bit, I want to do some experimenting with being higher at the front because I do believe it's more aero in some situations. I've got a video on that somewhere else. So the next thing you see me do will be sticking the, uh, the GXPBB in. Where is it? There it is. Cranks in, chain on, and pretty much good to go. Cheers. So that's it, BB and cranks in, went in really smoothly, cranks went in smoothly, and actually quite low drag. Um, probably probably lower drag than a normal Shimano setup would be in this frame, um, although the Shimano setup does have a much better bearing arrangement and a better preload system. The preload on this is kind of unknown. I've got the uh, wave spring behind this part, um, which is at some sort of working height, it's compressed like two mil. Um, so there is some preload on the bearings, but I don't really know how much. But uh, yeah, there's no slop. The the drag's quite low. So, and I've actually <laughs> this is a, this is an old BB. This is the BB that I took out of my old TCR when I had this on my other TCR. So this BB is probably done maybe 5,000 k at least, and uh, seems to be seems to be working okay. So. My point is that GXP can work can work okay if executed properly. The bearings are the right size, the axle's well tolerance, the frame's well tolerance. All to go goes together no problem.